Prince in, since 1970. Uh, this has caused a tremendous water shortage uh, on my farm. Uh, I've also noticed in my lifetime that the Thornton River has gone down approximately a foot. When I was a child, we used to go, and Chris used to go, we had a lot better canoeing than we do now. It's virtually impossible to canoe the Thornton 90% of the time. The times that we can do it at Thornton Hill are probably 25% of what they were 30 years ago. But then I came and I, I was down on the farm one day and I noticed that we put a beaver dam in. Or we didn't put a beaver dam, we had a dam and the beavers nicely put a big beaver dam in. And back from that dam, we've had five to seven um, uh, springs pop up, up to a quarter, a half mile away. And I was sitting there saying, what has happened? And then I started reading, I read Book Eager, and I talked to a boy called Bill Summerlight in Ohio, and he told me about what they were doing in Utah and Nevada and everywhere else. Mr. Hoffman and I are supposed to meet, meet with a man that started it on the East Coast in Maryland. He's got a couple projects promoted. We're the highest elevation of everything to the east of us. So we, we're the headwaters, so we're going to be the first to go dry. I mean, water runs downhill, it seeks its own level, which is the ocean. So we've got more pressure on our aquifers and our land, I believe, than most other people. A key, and the beaver was a keystone species in this area, and they pretty much were trapped at 200, 250 years ago. A keystone species is, species is an organism that helps to define an entire ecosystem. With that, its keystone species, the east ecosystem would be dramatically different or cease to exist altogether. Now, I don't think we got the beavers necessary to do the things that beaver dams do. So what I'm suggesting is a program of BDAs or beaver dam analogs. And the beaver dams have a number of natural characteristics that would help the county, I believe. One, they slow the water as it's coming down, which will reduce flooding, it'll reduce erosion, reduce sediment, blah, 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 blah. The second thing they'll do is filter the water. All the water that we drink today is filtered in some fashion. It goes through to the ocean and then it evaporates and comes back down. We all know that. But the other thing that's happening in Rappanic that's very concerning to me is we've got a lot of what I call acid rain. And we've got a lot of pollutants in the air and heavy metals which are contaminating our soils and they're gonna contaminate our water. So how do we get those contaminants out? Well, the best and most effective way we can get them out is by filtering the water. And a big, what I'm suggesting is a beaver dam analog or a it's a man-made beaver dam, basically. It's a semi-permeable weir. It slows the water, it filters. It helps the aquifers. It helps replenish the aquifers because of the backward hydraulic pressure. Uh, in this, and in this county, I think it's particularly important and I've talked to Mr. Hoffman and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, tried to call the section, I'm, I'm not gonna go, but I, I made over two or 300 calls on this issue, because I personally believe it's important. I think Rappahannock County has a possibility of being the greenest county, the healthiest county with the best water. Um, also, when you put the beaver dam in the stream, it 
it helps the habitat, it brings deer and bear and turkey. I mean, it's amazing the difference in flora and fauna like you wouldn't believe. I'm glad thank you most of the board down there and other people, but if anybody would like to see the difference in the environment caused by beaver dams, I'm glad to show you. It's, it's really amazing. And, it, and the, the wood. The other thing is it helps the soil so much. Right now with the present agricultural practices of and then inundating the land with lime, and lime is an essential component of cement, in my opinion. It makes our land harder. And uh, I read all kinds of studies, but one of them was fascinating to me. He said, we're getting 27% more hard rains than we did two years ago. Well, the harder the rain, the less it's going to stay on and the more erosion it's going to cause. So we need something, I think, to protect our aquifer, refill our recharge aquifer. And we also need to be protecting our water. I think that uh, this clever to corner uh, division that's coming in with 750 houses uh, I mean, it's beyond me, Mr. Curry's man, uh, engineer, put 750 times 100,000. How much is it? 7.5 million. Huh? 7.5 million. Okay. Well, you've got that, and they're going to be taking 10 or 20 million that in water, gallons of water out of the headwaters. Or the aquifers that may be from here. The other problem I've had in trying to do my research, they used to have a lot of number um, uh, stream counters, um, stream. What well, it's? Well, there's only one in the county on Battle Run. And I wrote the expert on that. I said, "Can you tell me it's going up or down?" He said, "No." said it's too complicated to figure because we don't have enough information. I called the health department, and this is something that I think the Board of Supervisors can really do to help. There's a program called Venus, V-E-N-I-S, that the health department, and one of their categories is to longitude, latitude, where they first hit the water, where they second hit the water, and where they finally stay. For well drilling there. What's that? When they're drilling wells. When they're drilling wells. Uh -huh. I think it's within the county's power under their building code to require that the, all uh, well drillers do this, and if they don't before getting a per permit or anything, uh, or being signed off on, that that be filled out and filled in, filled in accurately, and that way we might have some as citizens of Rappahannock an early warning when we're getting in real trouble. Without that, we don't we don't have anything. I, I tried to find the weather rainfalls for Rappahannock County for the last fifty years. Impossible. Not there, not the pile. Dennis Winfield had it, you know, for probably 35 years. Now, Runamuck System's been doing it for about 25, but they didn't get the old information and how, how it's evaluated and didn't on our standards that you can see the difference. Basically, we get somewhere between 35 and 45 inches of rain, sometimes as high as 80 to 90 inches in certain areas. But there's no way anybody understands what's occurring in the Rappahannock County watershed. And if we don't understand it, and we're in the most danger for losing water. But the, if we do these BDAs and then the Board of Supervisors, and we're asking for grants from for everybody, we're going to send that letter today to help us 
do a study that will be approved by the state because they won't take other states' information. They want to know what's done on the ground. Mr. Hoffman's found a man from Ecotone who's looked at all the studies and they've done a couple programs in Maryland. But I think instead of being at the back end of everything, let's try to be on the front end and protect Rabana County because there will become a point of no return. And there's no question, I used to argue against global warming. I thought it was a weather pattern and all. But what, I, what I've seen in the last 10 years, something's happened. And there's no question, and it's magnifying exponentially. And you see what happens in the Midwest and Lake Mead, yada, yada, yada. If we get hit with it, we don't have any water towers. We don't have anything. And most of this county is apple orchards. I mean, the agrarian part of it is apple orchards or cropland or cattle. And they would all be devastated if we got hit by a real drought. Now, if we do these BDAs, it's amazing the difference in the water quality in the land and also the protection for the farmer in case of drought. It also cleans up. I think eventually if the state and federal government look at it, they'll, they'll pay farmers to do BDAs because I think it's going to be such a benefit. It's easier to take the pollutants out now at the source than at the other one. I've got a one stream that's pretty low line that they would recommend 10 BDAs in it. They're pretty simple manufacturer process and we're hoping to have a demonstration at Thornton Hill on September 27th. But the Army Corps of Engineers now say we have a need to have a permit that they won't charge for, but it takes about 60 days and so that may come in the future. I've been working on this thing a lot since February and I'm aggravated, but if you all could do something to help and have a monitoring system by the wells that would give the data we need to do this. Also, if the county could push for some more water monitoring stations on the rivers, whether they're private or state, or have some of these other organizations get into it, I think it would be a real help because the wars in the future are going to be fought over water. That's what I see all the time. And we've got a tremendous amount of water that's fallen here now, but we could be hit with a 22 line a year drought like the Midwest. You know, I, nobody understands water and nobody, I mean, nobody understands weather, but I think we, if we start or become proactive, it could really be one of the best things that we've ever done in Rappahannock County, County. And I think we'd be a leader for the state. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't cost the Board of Supervisors that much money. We're sending that grant applications and we'll certainly send Mr. Curry one. I think the budget for the initial start of it is 170,000, which is expensive. But, you know, we've got to get scientists from Virginia Tech to come up here and monitor and do a lot of things and it depends, I mean, if you got into the complexity of the woods and how you build them and everything, it's really complicated. I mean, I wish Mr. Jerry, or Curry would uh, figure it out for me, but uh, I don't think he has the time and it's almost a full-time job. But Mr. Hoffman's here, he's gonna to speak to you a second about it. And then if you have any questions, for either of us, I will be glad to try. But I, I'm not an expert, but I've read a lot. Thank you. Thank you. It's just a pleasure. Uh, I'm Chair of the Board. My name is Brian Hoffman. I'm the Deputy Director of the President of the Rappahannock. We're an environmental nonprofit that serves 18 counties from Shenandoah National Park down to Chesapeake Bay. 
Uh, I'll tell the story of extreme dangers of what Mr. Fletcher was talking about, and I encourage you to reach out to the Rappahannock Rapidan Regional Commission and Rappahannock River Basin Commission, who are working with the General Department of Emergency Management to deploy a series of those uh, early warning stream gauge monitors for temperature and stream flow to help uh, better predict downstream flow. Um, the pandemic put a lot of that on hold, but there's money in place to do that, and we are looking for sites to put those. So, Rappahannock, there's plenty of places here for that. Um, I'm not here to uh, do a lecture on beaver dam analogs, but I will say that across the Commonwealth, all of our natural resource agencies and nonprofits are striving to find nature based solutions to address our environmental concerns. Uh, you, can, you, you can use riprap to solve problems, you can use concrete to solve problems, but you've just got concrete that eventually will crack. If you have a nature based solution, it's going to grow and be resilient with time, and you're going to get all of those positive externalities. In the case of these beaver <coughs> logs, you might be trying to address groundwater recharge, but you're going to get carbon sequestration, uh, better soil health, refugia for fish and wildlife habitat. Uh, so we're working, uh, we brought in a number of folks from Virginia Tech's Biological Systems Engineering. We are submitting funded proposals. This is a West Coast technology that's worked really well. And we're trying to figure out how to do it here and make it in vogue. So that it is a tool that Culpeper Soil and Water District has in their back pocket. Our local Department of Wildlife Resources has in their back pocket. And our agricultural students at uh, local high schools can start building these things as well. Uh, I appreciate your time. Hopefully we will be able to come back and invite everyone to come out and see one of these in practice. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I've got some viewers on Harris Hall Road if you want. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm kidding. I got in trouble last time I mentioned that. Um, my question is, so you identified the Program, which would be the, the mapping lack of latitude and longitude of, of wells drilled. Like, I assume for new construction, or somebody's putting in a new well on an old property. Um, aside from that, what, in, in your view, based on what you've reviewed so far, would be the practical role that our local government would play in this program? <coughs> and, well, I think you can mandate under the building code. That they not only put the longitude, latitude, and the height or elevation of the well, and then how long when they hit the first groundwater, which is basically surface water, which most of the people in Spiritville are going off of, and then it goes through a layer of semi permeable rock to another layer that's probably a bigger river or lower aquifer. Uh, I don't know which. But if you had all that information, I believe you could kind of tell if you had, I called the health department and I said, how many wells have you dug this year? And this is, the answer was, well, we've dug more this year than we did last. I said, how many are replacement wells? Or how many replacement wells have been dug in the county in the last five years? I said, I don't know. How many this year? Do you know? Could you give me a percentage? I don't know. Uh, but if it went into the system and it was documented in its electronic system run by the state, it wouldn't cost us anything. All, you, all the board of supervisors have to do is say, you've got to fill this form out or look at it and say, okay, you've got to tell us when you hit surface water, when you hit the, the big pool of water you go to where you've got enough well. If you did that, then there are computer models. I think you can pretty well figure out in the county after a certain amount of time where the streams are, where the water is, and it would cost, I mean, what they spend on the um, investigation of um, Cliff Miller's uh, golf course, thirty to $60,000, can you imagine what it would cost the county? If you all got a water problem, you've got to, there's a mechanism out there, all you've got to do is figure out a way to enforce it, and they do it east of 95 now. I think you can make it, a, I don't see why you couldn't make it a uh, requirement for the county. And, it, and you'd be getting data that would help all the citizens of the county make a 
Mr. Goff figure out how to make it a fire if they don't fill it out correctly or if they do it incorrectly. And it doesn't cost you anything and you've got a, then you got some information you can work with. Right now, nobody, I mean, I've called five geologists. Why is the Thornton River going down two and a half feet in the last 200 years? We don't know. So, uh, when you say beaver down, beaver down now, Well, it's family the streams, and I'm hoping we're going to be able to get away from the Army Corps of Engineers because that's just another hurdle and a permit. They don't, they don't charge for the permit, in my understanding, but it's a 60-day review process <coughs> before you get the permit or something. It's it's crazy. I mean, well, nothing's stopping you from going out there. Oh yeah, there is. <laughs> uh, that's what the Army Corps of Engineers is saying. I believe. When I saw you can lay some uh, trees down or uh, across the stream, but so the beavers, uh, you know, they're right now they're not that many beavers uh, on the farm right now. Right. And uh, but sometimes there's you know four or five beaver dams within a mile, and then the next thing you get. Well, you control by how many you build and how you build them, pretty much how they're going to last, I think, Chris. I mean, you can put in an initial one if you want to try it with uh, the thing that's like hazelwater, alders, and willows. Um, and then the other interesting thing about it, if you make it out of, and this is one of the things I really like, Mr. Hoffman and all. I started to do it myself, but there are certain woods that have antimicrobial actions in them, and they they take the pollutants out of the water. They're much better than, the, and there's a difference in densities of the wood and how long it will last. I mean, it's, it's a simple pro idea, but it's re it really be as complex it would be really very complex, and you almost need an engineer like, um, and I think a quarter of a mile part of my farm goes from 1,200 feet to 500 feet. And that's a pretty big elevation, and depending on the range we've got, uh, I'm sure we're going to have to replace a lot of those dams a lot of times to get it right. But I think we're going to have a real benefit in the long run. Mr. Parrish, uh, as part of that perfect process, we do look at designs and do some screen surveys to design the structures and take into account the impacts to downstream flooding. And so we don't want any of these structures to fail or cause impacts to downstream landowners. So that's all taken into account in that review process. You know, when you're putting one in, I mean, are you looking around? I mean, do you have to track, you put them in the pool of water to attract beavers. Uh, but, uh, and I guess it works some without the beavers. But, uh, so there has to be beavers in the area uh, to find that pool of water to go ahead and start building their own dams. Right. So one can only hope that beaver will come and take over because I certainly don't want to be going out there every couple of weeks to add some space and such to it. Um, like he was saying, they are the keystone species. These are what used to be all over our country, uh, our landscape and our watersheds, and they would fail and get caught up in the next one and they'd rebuild it. Um, it's a very dynamic system where right now our mindset is trying to keep things clean, get the water from one side to the other one without any obstructions. When actually that's the problem. Our water rain in here and we channelize it and then it leaves the county and it's out in the bay where it's no good to anybody. Um, except the water is worth putting down there. So the more we can keep the water on site and infiltrate it, and this doesn't just have to be once the water is in the stream system, when we can encourage infiltration in our crop fields, 
off our parking lots into rain gardens and other green infrastructure. We're working with elementary school to design some green infrastructure into that. Anything we can do to get water to go into the ground, it takes two times, three times as long for water to move underground. It's probably a drastic underestimation, but if we can get it in the ground, it's going to stay here longer. That's going to provide a lot of benefits instead of running off the parking lot into a storm drain and off the hill. Super interesting. Very interesting. Is there any difference between um, these beaver dam analogs and uh, leaky years, or, or what are those things called? Is it leaky years? I first read about those on the development of the black kettle development study that come about. They were talking about mitigating some of the water issues there. That's what they call them in England and Australia. So they're, they're I mean, I've been to basically at the same time. Okay. And they, you use on site materials mainly. <coughs> so you don't want treated posts. You want to, it depends on the flow and the engineering, what you need, but it's mainly mud, rocks, sticks, and leaves. Are there other companies already tracking the well, um, the digging of the well and the different levels of the water? It's in the groundwater management area, it's permitted by the state. You have to. And, but they also restrict large withdrawal users and things like that, which don't apply over here. But we, of course, we don't have it there, really. So it's not like the data is not being held in a way that's easy to access. They are interviewing. I mean, the health department is not bad. Uh, they haven't any of the information, in my understanding. Water, um, water. Well, the VDH permits for the drinking water wells, and we we can, uh, uh, Mr. Goff and I can review state code and see what we're entitled to require or not. And, you know, maybe privileges granted to those in the groundwater management area that we don't have, but we can, we can review that. That's well, my question for Mr. Hoffman was do you know if there's east of 95, the data is, is, is manda mandated, the reporting of the data? I'm, I can't give you a definitive answer on that, but I do know there are specific requirements in that Eastern Virginia groundwater management area. Because in order to do something like this, we'd have to have a specific statutory grant of authority to do that. We can't just make it up. Uh, we got to have some sort of uh, authority from Richmond to require somebody to, to keep data like that. Is that is it fundamentally a dual rule issue? It's going to be a deliberate issue, and we can't just make it up out of whole cloth. And it, it may be there. There may be. It may be in May. Yeah, in, in the code. And That's what I'm asking. We can review that. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not an attorney, but this would not be restricting an individual's rights on the property. It would just be data that's already there from the contractor, the log driller, is just being reported for the beneficial use of the entire county. Well, sure, but for us to mandate it, we got to have some authority to do that. And that's got to come from Richmond, not from us. We well, can't just... I think Loudoun County has already got legislation on their books. And they owe okay. less than 95. All right. That, that, I talked to somebody the other day, and they said that the permits, they were doing this stream bank um, mitigation. And uh, they said the permits from Loudoun County for the water and water quality was adding six months or a year to the job. I, I hope we can streamline it. I, I'll bet you a dollar to a donut that we can figure out a way, maybe under the local building ordinance or something that we can require the well drillers. They're supposed to give the form anyway, but we need to get it filled out and put into the system. I read and, your material. Uh, I just was, my, my legal question was to the extent to which the, the, the county, without without a specific grant of authority, statutorily could. Well, if you, if you can't figure it out, I've talked to all the legislators that represent this county, and I'm sure, and they are all said it's a great idea. And it might be we need a legislative fix. For yeah, well, we, we can do that, but you know, if you look at it the next month and figure out what we need, I'll help get it done. Any other questions? That's great. Sounds like another said, I have the next month's agenda. Follow up later. And if you do confirm the date for the demo, please let us know. I will be glad to. Mr. Hawkins in charge of that. <laughs>
I've been pushing to have it done since August, but it, the government moves extremely slowly. Not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. No, but I think it's an opportunity yeah. for the yeah. county to really do something. I mean, what we get mainly out, out of the county is a tax bill. Yeah. And this is something that could, I think, really help the county and every farmer and every individual. Because, I mean, the times are coming. I, I mean, they draw 155 million gallons out of the aquifer for Northern Virginia every day. We, we get infection. We've got a lot of many happy too. Thank you all. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for all your work on this. It's really